previously making a video, but I ain't want to put personal information out there on on my brother like that. Because, you know, you know how social media and shit get viral when people take things out of hand. So I'm going to keep it more simplified, you know, because this is more focused towards me. The second oldest brother in my family. Finally got to talk to him after a couple of months. He called me. Usually I don't pick up the phone. Usually think it's a scam. Usually just don't answer the phone because I don't talk on the phone like that too much. So, but I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It was just like answer the phone. Phone was in the other room and playing my game. And he answered the phone. He was crying. He said, man, I don't know where I'm at. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's going on. I left Baltimore. I'm out here with the wrong crowd, doing the wrong things. This ain't me. I told him, so what do you want me to do? He said, he just wanted me to talk to him. He said, I haven't talked to you in months, man. You know, he wanted to apologize for threatening me. I said, you don't have to apologize for that. He said, why not? He said, that's the reason why you stopped talking to me. He said, that's the reason why you just, I, I, he said he couldn't explain it. I couldn't explain it to you. He said, I didn't, ignore, you know, ignore you. I didn't just block you just to block you. I can't prepare myself to know that my brother is about to face death or jail because of the things that you were doing out here, man. I couldn't accept it. It's just not in me. I know what that role go down. It's, it's it's no good outcome for what you want to do. I told him that. So he said, how do you know all this? You know, you stayed home too. We were stuck in the house and then our mother put us out with nothing to do, with no way to go. And, and now look at us, you know, but somehow you, you and D'Angelo, you know, y'all got the help and, and our littlest brother, he, he still got our mom and I'm out here alone. I said, that's right. I do, I know. I said, you forgot who was the first one to get put out the house. Well, more so, you didn't forget. You just assumed things just went peachy. Didn't go peachy. So I told him what I'm about to tell y'all. And hopefully this reached y'all. If you have a little brother, sibling, if it's you in general, if it's just you, hopefully these words get to you. And if they don't, I mean, it don't matter. It's just me putting it out there. So I told him what happened. At 16, my mother signed me up for Job Corps to go to Job Corps. At this time period, I had just failed a year of college. <clears throat> I was in, I think, the 11th grade. If I, can, yeah, I think I was in the 11th grade. So I spoke to the 12th. And that's what happened. And then I didn't. I already started falling into the bad crowd. Wasn't even a bad crowd. I didn't fall into the bad crowd. I made myself a crowd and put people in it. I went over to Carver. I'm from East Side. The school is over West. It's a whole new environment for me. And I went from my education to doing nothing. I literally did nothing the whole time. I, smart guy, smart man. You know, ain't trying to toot my own horn or nothing. But I was smart. Honor roll, honor roll, honor roll, honor roll, honor roll. Good grades. Know my shit. Don't study. Just, just, I don't know how to explain it. It's just there. It was there. 
But what I started realizing wasn't that, and I didn't realize that now, but I did not have common sense. Did not have no type of common sense. Because with all this smarts, when you got to the 11th grade year, when it was time to get to the 12th and just graduate, you cut a few times in 10th grade because your grades are so good. You're just cutting school and everything so fine. Then you get involved with these girls and you like, damn, yo, I, I want to fuck with these girls all the time. I want to fuck this one, that one, that one, that one, this one, that one, this one. Then you got a crazy girlfriend on top of that. It didn't work out the way I planned it to. Basically, I failed. Okay, I failed. She put me in another school. The first day I got in that school, I went back up to Carver. I put on a Carver shirt. I walked through Carver. Hey, hey, there eight eggs of people that I know. Here go the people I know. Trust passed me. Didn't know you could go to jail for that. I didn't go to jail for that. Thank, thank goodness. But... The hall monitors was still there. And they like, yo, you still doing the same shit on the first day, man. Didn't you fail last year? What is you doing, man? Me not knowing what trespassing is, I told them. Hey, man, look, I'm just doing my thing up here, man. Hey, I'm at another school. I got to go to class. I'm up here bragging about my classes in another school. and I'm not even supposed to be here, but I'm here. So you can't tell me go to class. My dumb ass could have been putting put in jail for that or just I don't know I don't know I don't know I know it wouldn't have been good so the hall monitor pulled me to the side literally jacked me up took the shirt off and nigga are you stupid you don't belong here now I'm gonna give you a regular shirt and let you walk up out of here but do you know you could go to jail for this do you know how stupid you sound right now you really transferred to another school what did you doing in here then you can't do that. That's trespassing. You're not supposed to be here. <sighs> you know, I was just trying to explain it to him. So he's saying, I get that. You know, I know all that. You you told me all that. I said, no, this is, this is what started it. I said, because I wanted to do what you do. You try and do what I was doing. Trying to do a different type of lifestyle that ain't it. That wasn't for you. So I got deeper. I said, I'm going to tell you some real shit. And if if it don't wake you up, if it ain't too late, because I'm not going to lie. Like I said, I'm not going to lie to him. It might be too late. When you don't know where you at, when you went to places you don't even know where you at, and you in a bad situation, and there's nothing you can do about it, and no one can help you, and because you put yourself in such a bad situation that if somebody finds you, you might still end up in jail. You better off unfound, right? He said, yeah. He said, that's why I only want to talk to you because I just want to know what, like, what could I have done? And I said, the road you went down, there's nothing you could have done. I, I, I don't know what else you could have done. He wanted me to continue on with mine because he was like, I just don't understand because you act like you you know this point of view. But you got a family and you got a job and you live in life and you doing your thing. So how could you understand what it's like to literally lead a house to nothing and struggle and really be out here? I said, how long you thought I went to job court for? Told me three to four years. That's how long it was since he's seen me. I said, Job Corps don't let you stay past two years. You don't even really get to make two years unless you're disabled. I'm not disabled. That's kind of clear as day with what they seen. Because I did everything in a year. Had my fun up there. Still doing dumb shit. But I made sure I got what I needed. Then I had my fun and, and milked the time and enjoyed it. And enjoyed that, that freedom. The, the experience of not doing the things I was doing but I said two years before that when she quote unquote signed me up I was at my cousin house still going to high school <clears throat> transferred to another school because I wanted to graduate cousin cousin was he was like a 
a role model to me. I didn't know his other lifestyle. He was everything my brother wanted to be. He was in the streets. He was doing crazy things. He was he was in he was in everything. <laughs> he was in a little bit of everything. He was he was skilled. He was skilled at what he do. He was skilled. He was very skilled. He had connections. He was he was everywhere. And I, I don't know. He, he was to me the man. You know. And he was like, yeah, I remember him. You know, I didn't get to see him much, but he stayed. He got money. Yeah. That money didn't save his life. That money didn't save his life. But the knowledge that he gave me, the knowledge and the opportunity that he gave me saved my life. Because there was a time where I was just like you. When I started hanging around him with the wrong crowd, trying to fit in with them tight people. There was a time where I was just like you trying to get, when I was getting bullied. When people had smart things to say about you. When people always want to talk that shit. Because you play video games. Because you like playing on phones. Because you you, you got Yu-Gi-Oh cards and stuff that I got there. I just randomly got sitting here because I was doing things with them. Because I was a weirdo. Because I am a weirdo. You play, you know. I wanted to prove them wrong. I wanted to be just like them. I wanted you to believe that I'm something I'm not. But on the road of doing that, I did things that you would not do. And I hope that you haven't done because then you don't deserve to be found. I said, I want you to understand this. I said, if you did these things that, that I told him, I said, I need you to hang up the phone because we have nothing to discuss no more. Because without the right mindset, without having any intelligence, without having a pathway or a goal, what you just done and committed and the things that you do, you're not making it. It's over. It's done. Either you're going to jail or somebody's about to come kill you. So he said, I haven't done none of those things. Even the people that I was around haven't done none of those things. But he sounded more like, what, what type of life, what, what was you doing? No, I was like, I know you sound confused. I know you, I know you don't fully understand. Because I could see it in you. I already knew it. You, you, the, the things that people are capable of, you are not capable of. And it's a good thing. And I, I wish I could have preserved that type of innocence. In my life. Keep my life in order. Because if the road I was going down. It just wasn't good. And my cousin was trying to talk me out of it. He's like I know I got you staying here. He said I know. This place. This environment I got you in. It ain't for you. Man. It was times where your mother used to call me and brag. You was on, on a roll. And you was doing good and stuff, man. What, what is you doing? Why are you, why are you going down this road? Are you trying to follow me? I told him, yeah. You get into the money. I mean, me and you were already getting all these females, right? So, it's the life I want to live. And I enjoy it. Like, I got a thrill out of it. It was satisfying. It was just something about it. And I felt like these people wanted me to feel like, oh, you ain't playing with this no more. You doing things that's going to get you killed. Yeah, that's 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 what we wanted. We just want to see you fall in the same crowd. We want to see you on the news. We want to see you in prison. You know, want to see you not succeed, you know. Don't want to see you do things that you actually enjoy. I told him people are always going to try to take advantage of you when you're at your lowest, man. Don't let these people do that. And he did that. And it was too late. He already let them do it. <clears throat> now, the time that I spent with my cousin that is no longer here right now because path that he went down and, it, and this is the thing though 
This ain't somebody before people start judging. Somebody just go out here killing innocent people, just going out, oh, let's do drive-bys and do crazy shit. Let's join a gang. Wasn't in a gang. Wasn't, was, was not killing, wasn't, wasn't doing things I'm not going to mention, but nobody innocent, nothing innocent is going on here. There's nothing innocent, no innocence, period here. Just everyone doing things that they're not supposed to do. I got involved in things that I shouldn't have got involved in. And looking back now, it just wasn't me. But you know what the crazy thing was? It was me. <clears throat> because these same people that got so much to say about you, so much hate in their heart for you that they're willing to bring you down. They're willing to pick on you, get on your nerves, bully you, put their hands on you. It was satisfying to get back and show them something. But in reality, what was I showing them? <clears throat> and I told my brother this. <clears throat> I said, imagine being able to harm every person that harmed you. It feels satisfying, right? He said, I don't know about that. I said, does it feel satisfying for someone that has insulted you, that put their hands on you, bullied you, that put you in the situations that you're in, for you to be able to harm them yourself and make them become the person that they act like they not someone who didn't want to be judged so they judge the next person as much as they make these videos about oh the bully is actually the one being bullied it's real truth to that because when you put them on the spot they turn into you they turn into worse than you they start begging and pleading and uh, help and all this other bullshit start start acting like they're your friend and everything imagine feeling that do it feel good to you? He said, sort of. I said, no. I said, because... Because the, the, the people, the people that do that can't reach out for help. It's too late for them. They can't reach out. So all they do is the same shit until it's their time to go. Why do I know that? Because after becoming this person that, oh, you're not just going to play with me. Oh, you're not going to talk shit about me. Oh, no, nah, we ain't doing that up in here. It ain't going to happen. After that's done, I'm still the same person. I'm still this person. I'm still this person. I'm still that person. Someone else is still going to consider you this person. But you are also that person. You both are one and the same. So the same way you harm that person. Is the same way that person harmed you. But you didn't understand their point of view. You just think they're bullying. But in reality. Now you're doing what they're doing. Because you, you got on me. It's my turn. It's my turn. Oh it don't feel good. Do it. it don't feel good. But wait a minute. It's the same thing this man was saying to me. Doing the same shit to me. So what brought him to that point? It's just a point of no return. You don't know what to do next. You don't have a mindset. So I told my brother, I said, because this was a long conversation, so if I get confused, I'm sorry. But, you know, I'm going out of order pretty much, you know. But it was a long, long thing. It, it, it gave him like a wake-up call. But I basically told him, I said, of all the things that I've done, I, I had all the money that I made. It wasn't from selling drugs. It wasn't none of, none, of, none of that stuff. Just I was making money doing things that I should not have been doing. I got into a lot of conflicts. I resolved a lot of issues in my life people getting on my nerves and I felt it and it was like this this feeling I was like oh yeah 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 it solved something it didn't solve anything and out of all that money I made still working a nine to five still working a regular job trying to find side hustles trying to find a new way it wasn't the answer 
because that money dried up so fast. I'm trying to live this cool life, man. You know, I told people I had a job when I was in high school. I ain't had no motherfucking job in high school. I didn't have no job in high school. But I was buying the suits and the ties and all that. When people thought it was this uh, this association thing. You just doing your thing, man. You doing it. I'm not doing none of that. And that suit, you know, the place I was in, none of that was where that money came from. That money was gone with the suits and the stuff just to see because I like being a different type of because that was me the suits and the ties and the money and the spending spending it on girls and doing this and that but at night time it's just a whole nother thing it was just a whole nother thing that it wasn't meant to be he said he asked me a question that I'm not going to put on here because clearly, you know, I'm just not going to put certain things on here. But he asked me a question. He said, is it true then? I said, yeah. I said, yes, yes, yes. I said it just like that too. I really started teaming up because it was taking me back to a place that I didn't belong in. I said, this is the life you wanted to live though. If somebody had gave you this option and gave you that choice and you made that move, you would have made it with no question asked. He said, I probably would have, to be honest. He said, because right now I, I'm in a, in a crossroads. He felt like he was in a It was as if I was talking to a ghost. It was as if I was talking to somebody that wasn't even here. In my mind, I'm wondering, like, am I talking... To my dead brother Cause the way he kept sounding I don't know where I'm at I don't know what I'm doing I don't know what's going on But I don't want help Because I just wanted to talk to you These are final words From a dead person As if a ghost had called my phone And he was just Wanting to get things off his chest And wanted me to get things off my chest Like we both get to get our final part it was so disturbing and it just hurt. Like, how did we get to this point, man? How did we get to this point? We was good kids. We was good kids, man. Baby five. Couldn't even wash dishes barely. Barely could wash clothes, you know? How did we get to these type things? And these are things that I haven't shared with my mother, but my mother could feel it when I finally came back from, even coming back from job court, she could feel this energy off of me. I didn't know if I was still giving it all because I had changed. I changed my life, but it was just something she could feel. Like, no, congratulations on that, but this is just something you're not trying to tell me. It's something you won't admit to me. And it hurt not saying nothing, but how could I? How could I tell her? How could I tell her any anything that I went through? Because it would mean that I lied to you for two whole years before I moved into that. But I did graduate and I did get my life together. But the things that I did, you would feel like it all went to nothing. All the stuff that I did good, this, that's where you went down the wrong road and there was no coming back. And I didn't know how she would take it. So, basically, I just told him my story. I told him everything that was going on in my life. I told him I hit rock bottom. I came to my cousin who was living this lifestyle. I tried to live it with him. I enjoyed it. But then it all crashed. It all crashed. And, and this part I can somewhat tell you. We got into a major, major issue, a major issue, major. And we was, had nothing to do with me, had something to do with him. This guy's the one that provided for me, gave me a home, 
gave me cash, gave me a way, gave me a hustle, but also kept my mentality so right to the point where he was like, don't go fully in this. Don't don't fully do what I do. Don't don't do this because this is not you. I was like, I know this ain't me, man. But one thing about me, I'm done playing with people, man. I'm done playing with people. These people play with me all the time. I'm done playing with these people, man. That's one thing. It's just done. I was done with it. To this day, I still kind of feel that way, but I try. You got to just realize it's just not worth it. But one night, one night just changed everything. It just put me on a new pedestal of what I should not have become. It put me on that shelf of, you're done. You're done. My cousin. <clears throat> He, I, I don't know how to really put it. I can't put it the way I want to put it. I can't put it. I just can't. But he took a bullet from me. That's how I can say it. He, he took a major bullet from me. Something that would have ruined my life forever. And I would have never had a family. I would have never had a daughter, a job. I would not have nothing. I would not. Probably wouldn't even be here right now. Wouldn't even be here right now. Not at this age. Him. This time. He was the one that was innocent. He was the innocent one. Had nothing to do with the situation. Was the cause of the situation. I got involved. And. It didn't go well. It went. As I expect. But things happened. And. He said. And these were the last things he said to me. Because he knew it was coming. The blue. White and red lights flashing. At the 15 minutes of us just. Looking at each other. And just looking at me like. Is this my fault? I said it's not your fault. He told me, look, I can't do this to you. I can't do this to you. He said, man, I brought you here so I can help you, so you can have a home, so you could live a normal life, so you could grow. And now I got you like this? He said, nah. He said, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. He said, you consider me a role model. You tell me that all the time. But he said, in reality, I look up to you. He said, the reason why I had you here is because it's someone so intelligent. Someone that could do both sides of the field. You could just, just go into this. Then go into that. Then go into this. In an instant, man, he said, you got a skill. A skill that you need to use to get out of this. Now that you know about this. And go back on the right path, man. He said, promise me this. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, it's too late. Like, you, you, it's too late. He said, it ain't too late. He said, it's too late for me. He said, the life that I lived all this time, he said, it's been overdue. When it was time, he, he did his part and he told me, he prompt, made, told me, make a promise. He said, you would lead this life alone. You would leave this life alone because there's nothing else left here for you. It's a, this ain't you right now. What are you going to do with this? Lights get closer. Lights get closer to the house. He said, I'm going to do this. You going to live your life, man. He said, you're going back to your mother. He said, I'm going to sign you up from Job Corps. He said, we're going to get through this. He said, I need you to do this for me, man, because this is me giving my all to you. I need you to do the same thing. It's something that you already know how to do. I had to talk to him from behind a fucking plastic window a couple days later. 
just to be able to talk to him. And he kept preaching the same thing. Then in my head, my life was changed. I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know. But I did it. I let my mother sign me back up for job corps, which I told her I completed one session for two years. You get another two years. You get to keep doing it till you're 26 or whatever. And I actually went. But I told him during them times, them two years, it changed my life. It made me a person that I wasn't supposed to be. For this man, my cousin, and I told him, this is where your role comes in at. So I said, this is the life that he lived. Your role model, my role model. Got out of jail. Got out of jail. He got out of jail in seven years. Something that should have took 60. No, we ain't talking no snitching shit. We talking about lawyers. Talking about good behavior in prison. Just thinking things through. Because like like he said, he got, he, he got skills too. He wasn't about all this crazy shit where he didn't belong on the street. Because he didn't do anything to anything. So, seven years. Got out. Grinding. Got two jobs. Had a girl. Had the life he always wanted. Had the life he always dreamed of. Got a Viper. Nice ass car. Got things that people don't even get. Grinding a degree for eight years. I have a doctorate degree. Had a house. Just living your life. Just on a whole new level. I'm like, this man came out, man. Not even three days after he came out. Not even three. I don't even think it was three. The same people you ride with hated to see you make it. Did not want to see you make it. The same people that you was riding with and pressing and all this, the ones that had your back shot you up. No, and it ain't all over this or over that. No, you got out of prison. You living your life, but you living good. They don't want to see you live good. They don't want to see you leave the dark side, go to the light side and see this bright view where, wait a minute, I could have made all this money doing this. Let me get to that. They said no and fed them 30 shots. 30, 30 shots. Can you picture one person taking 30, taking 30 shots? Why you got to feed 30 shots? It wasn't to kill. It was just a massacre. It was to unleash the feeling that they had, the feelings that they had of resentment that you, that you could still make it outside of this. But guess what? Without you, we don't even know what we doing. We lost causes out here, man. We starving. But you living good. We don't like you living good. So we going to unload clips on you. Over and over and over and over and over and over. Man. My brother said, I thought he did suicide. And that's what you was told, right? That's what you was told from me, right? wasn't the truth got killed by the people that he was trying to impress for years the people that he rode with the people that he fed the people that he made look good because he was making it in another way and they did not like it so I told him I said after that It was almost no point of return for me. I, I, I wanted I wanted to get involved. I made my word with this man. 
And even after he got out and all the times I visited, he kept saying the same thing. You want that? Oh, you in there? You doing that? You doing good? Oh, I'm so proud of you, man. Please stick to it. Well, I go back. Those seven years he was in there, I started bettering my life. Really started bettering my life, man. Things got better. I don't really know how to explain. I don't even know. I can't even. I don't even know if it was seven years. Because by the time he got out, he he didn't even make it to see nothing. It wasn't even. He didn't even do the seven years. He was supposed to do the seven years. The lawyer had got him seven years. I can't remember how long it was. But it went from all that other shit that was going on to that seven years. That's what I remember. And, but he got out early. I mean, this was some crazy early shit just because of good behavior. It's like, I don't know, the court system could see what it's like. This, this ain't it. Or because they knew something else. They knew something else. They, I don't know. They probably knew something else. But he did get out. He didn't get to see my daughter yet. At that time, I didn't have a daughter. I was just almost finishing that. When it hit me, I was a year and a half in. So I was about 19, 20-ish. Like a little over. So it was like two-ish years. I can't, can't really recall. I tried to push it back and forget it. And talking to him made me remember all of it again. And it's just, well, the main point I want to get at, though, man, don't let your people go down the wrong road. And if you are going down the wrong road and it ain't for you, man, don't, just don't do it. I don't want to get into detail over that, man, because God gave me a second chance. God above and the God that was down here, the one that held my shoulder. When my family, when everybody else turned their back on me, when everyone was against me and had something to say out their mouth, that man stood by my side. Then that man said, even after all this, this still ain't true. I'd rather be the one to bear all of that burden. I never met people so real in my life, man. It was just unreal, man. I want to say rest in peace, cuz. Really rest in peace, man. I really appreciate the opportunity, man. And I did. I, I got so much better. I'm, I'm trying, man. I'm trying to make it through these times. And I told my brother, I said, I'm still fighting these demons, bro. Every day, in my head, just walking around listening to music, thinking to myself, like, I shouldn't be here right now, man. Every day looking at these same people, these these fucking fake ass people that I can see through because I'm that the nigga that ain't supposed to have been in there. That ain't in there. You just trying to fit that that skin. You just putting it on, got the tattoos, and you just in there. So you you talk your shit. But that it's just ain't true, man. And to say what you want. And everybody want to act like this is who they are. But we know. We know deep down inside that's not us, man. I told him, I said, I know this ain't true, man. I knew it wasn't true. That's why I couldn't talk to you. Because I know where you was headed, man. Not everyone gets lucky. Not everyone gets this miracle. Some people get put straight where they need to go. Some people get killed on the spot, man. Some people don't have that figure, that muscle, that back power that they needed to get through, man. You don't have that. And I can't be that. I can't go back down that road. Come down there, wherever you at, somehow figure out where you are. Deal with all the demons that you had. If, and, 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 and then what, man? Who gonna take care of my family? Who gonna take care of my house, man? All the skeletons come out, man. 
I get hit with books I never even read before, man. Talking about some just just not ready, not ready for that because it's not me. I'm not ready for this, man. So I'm just, just trying to tell him, like, yo, if I was to come down there and help you, I'm not coming back. I would be my cousin. But the difference is I made a promise to that man. And I tried to guide you in the right direction, man. But you went in a whole nother one. I said, this is a side of me you don't know. This is a side of me a lot of people don't know. Because it's not meant to be known. It's not me. It's only me when somebody just pushes the limits. When you is in something that you're not supposed to be in. When this is me. When it involves me. I'm not out here on the corner chilling. I'm not on the block. I'm not I'm not no gangster. I'm not no hustle. I'm not none of that. I'm a man that defends me. That's what I always been. That's what I was there for, to defend me. I was tired of it, man. But I would never do what you do. I would never join that for some reputation. Never fuck a bitch just to say, I fuck the bitch and tell him, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Everything I did was for me and my satisfaction. Because this is what I wanted to experience. I wanted another side of me. I wanted that aggression. But I finally realized it was just already there. A man gonna defend himself regardless if you really want to defend yourself. You ain't got to be a chump. You ain't no chump. Everybody had an instinct in them. You just got to unleash it when it's the time. And you got to do it precisely. And you got to do it with the right mindset. You didn't do it. It's too late. So... I think I ended the convo with a couple more messages to him. I'm like, man, look, figure out where you are. Call 911. I don't know what to tell you, man. I just hope that you realize that you made a mistake and that there may be a big chance that you can't come back from it. The same way for other people. Sometimes if you don't catch them people in time, it may be too late. Stop them, man. Stop feeding them that. Some people ain't made for that, man. And when you out here intimidating these people and bullying these people and getting on their nerves, calling them weird and all these things, you don't know what they think in their head, bro. They might start, I might need to try that way because I can't live life like this with everybody judging me. Or you may never know the person that you're picking on is tired of it. And they say, well, you're not judging me or anybody else no more. I guarantee you that. Is that really worth it? I told him that's how I understand where you're coming from. That's why I know the type of lifestyle you're trying to live, man. Because you're trying to live it. You didn't live it. I didn't live it. Because it wasn't me. I didn't live it. I was visiting. I was renting a spot. And my rent was up. My lease was over. It just... It just This just wasn't my night, man. But he said, thank you. He said, he said, I'm going to figure something out. He said, I'm going to get out of this, man. He said, he said, if you can do it. And after I ran every, because I gave him full details of everything. I pretty much gave him the whole black book. So he said, if you can do, do this and live the life you live in, there ain't no way I can't do it. I said, you right. Anybody can do it, man. It don't matter how far down you went. If you out here right now, you can change your life, man. You ain't got to live the way they want you to live. You ain't got to live the way people are trying to bring you down, man. Just know. Just just, just time it. Be precise, man. If it ever comes down to it, when it's you versus them and you have no other options, be precise. Make sure you good. Don't let them take everything from you. Yeah, that's really all I got to say, man. I ain't going to keep talking y'all here, though. Because some people ain't even listening to this. Some of them like, man, fuck all that, man. All that. They, these are the, the thoughts of people that's already lost, man. And sometimes it just ain't no going back. And that's why the ones that are bullying and doing all these things. This ain't even about bullying, but this is just a standpoint that people... They do things that they shouldn't do is because there's nothing left. Their mind is done. They're dead. They're dead. And the only thing left is poison. 
how do you want to handle that poison? Do you have an antidote? There is no antidote for some people, man. Some people are meant to face what they face. Sometimes you get yourself so deep and you could be innocent and everything, but there's no miracle for you. You just sunk it. My phone about to die. I'm done really talking because the word probably won't even be heard to anybody anyway. I just hope that it was heard through my brother. And I do hope that someone actually understand where I'm coming from. Because I know a lot of people don't know the real me. You know, you know, you know this one. Because that is the real me. But I want you to understand that. Beyond all that, and the phone, and the games, and the little smoking. It's someone you would never want to meet. It's not, a, it's not a nice person. It's not somebody that cares about anybody. It's not somebody that would give you an option or anything. Just wanting to take everything. But you can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. So just, just, man, stop people from going down the wrong road. And if you were going down the wrong road, please. Just think about turning back around. Because there are other ways out of this, man. Unless you're just ready to die. That's not the way to go, man. Us as black people, man, we should be able to go go beyond this, man. It's not no dead end, man. The, this area that we live in is not a dead end. It's open. It's everywhere. Get yourself. Just get better, man. I hope all of you, whoever's listening, really understood where I was coming from. And... Y'all just be safe and follow your dreams. Do whatever you got to do. Stay out of trouble. Just don't take that road. All right. I'm, I'm going to end it there. I love everybody, man. For real. Love everybody. I'm not no mean person. I'm not crazy. You know, just defending me. Other than that, I love everybody. Man. I'm a nice person. You know, I'm actually nice. I'm understanding. Accepting and everything, you know. So, with that being said, man, that, that's gonna be the end of my video, man. It don't get no realer than that. It could get realer, but right now, it don't get no realer than that, man. Y'all be safe, man.